Texas Supreme Court Justice Deborah Lerman, in the case of Kinney and Barnes, cited in her judgment the film The Big Lebowski. Her Honor, summoning John Goodman's character Walter Sobchak, quoted this scene. Excuse me, sir. Could you please keep your voices down? This is a family restaurant. Oh, please, dear. For your information, the Supreme Court has roundly rejected on, prior restraint. This is not a First Amendment. Judge Goldberg in Schenck and the Commissioner for Internal Revenue, a case about fertilizer and tax deductions, began his decision with a quote from the Bible, but made his own addendum to the quote, stating, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which has been planted, a time to purchase fertilizer and a time to take a deduction for that which is purchased. The court in Bradshaw and Unity Marine Corp took quite the disliking to the lawyers involved, stating, Before proceeding further, the court notes that this case involves two extremely likeable lawyers who have together delivered some of the most amateurish pleadings ever to cross the hallowed causeway into Galveston, an effort which leads the court to surmise but one plausible explanation. Both attorneys have obviously entered into a secret pact, complete with hats, handshakes and cryptic words, to draft their pleadings entirely in crayon on the backsides of gravy-stained paper placemats in the hope that the court would be so charmed by their childlike efforts that their utter dearth of legal authorities in their briefing would go unnoticed. Whatever actually occurred, the court is now faced with the daunting task of deciphering their submissions. With Big Chief tablet readied, thick black pencil in hand, and a devil-may-care laugh in the face of death, life on the razor's edge sense of exhilaration, the court begins. <laughs> British Judge John Lee on the 30th of September 1992 put a man on probation for two years for aggravated burglary. Why? The court was told the man had committed the crime as he was hoping he would be arrested so he could get away from the emotional problems with his girlfriend. His honour then made the situation all the more humorous by stating, A lot of the excuse for your behaviours is that you had problems with a woman. Who do you think hasn't? I've had my girlfriends. I've had a wife for the last 37 years. Even after 37 years, they give you problems from time to time. I'm sure that I can say for her that I don't go out committing crimes to work out my frustration, and neither does she. If a woman upsets you, that's all right. It's part of their function in life. It's part of the fun they have. It's part of your fun as well. If you have not picked up on that, you should. His Honor then took it even further. When asked by a female member of the press to elaborate on his statement, he responded with a queer of his own. Which lesbian group are you from? <music> Judge Deborah Savito handed down judgment in the case of D'Angelo Bailey and Marshal Bruce Mathers III, a.k.a. Eminem or Slim Shady. Her Honor handed down an excellent and lengthy diss rap in her order, stating, To convey the court's opinion to fans of rap, the court's research staff has helped the court put the decision into a universally understandable format. She begins. Mr. Bailey complains that his rep is trash, so he's seeking compensation in the form of cash. Bailey thinks he's entitled to some monetary gain, because Eminem used his name in vain. Eminem says Bailey used to throw him around, beat him up in the john, shoved his face in the ground. Eminem contends that his rap is protected by the rights guaranteed by the First Amendment. Eminem maintains that the story is true, and that Bailey beat him black and blue. In the alternative, he states that the story is phony, and a reasonable person would think it's baloney. The court must always balance the rights of a defendant and one placed in false light. If the plaintiff presents no question of fact, to dismiss is the only acceptable act. If the language used is anything but pleasing, it must be highly objectionable to a person of reason. Even if objectable and causing offence, self-help is the first line of defence. Yet when Bailey actually spoke to the press... What do you think he didn't address? Those false light charges that so disturbed prompted from Bailey not a single word. So highly objectionable, it could not be. Bailey was happy to hear his name on a CD. Bailey also admitted he was a bully in youth, which made what Marshall said substantial truth. This doctrine is a defence well known and renders Bailey's case substantially blown. The lyrics are stories no one would take as fact. They're an exaggeration of a childish act. Any reasonable person could clearly see that the lyrics could only be hyperbole. It is therefore the court's ultimate position 
that Eminem is entitled to summary disposition.